have an update. I have an update. I have an update. So if you're new here, my name is Taylor and I teach third grade in Central California. And if you haven't heard, I got an update. It is October 21st. Where I'm at in California is finally in the red tier and that means if we can stay in the red tier for two weeks, we can move into hybrid. So what that means is we just got used to distance learning and now we're gonna switch it up and go to hybrid. And guys, this hybrid plan does not seem terrible. I know a lot of people right now are really struggling with the hybrid model and I'm sure it will have its challenges. My God, I'm sure of it. But my district, I feel like is doing things a little differently and I, I love this plan that we have so far. I feel like it's too good to be true. I feel like someone or something's got to mess it up. But so far, that's the plan. So I did make a video a couple months ago, beginning of the school year, whenever I thought we were going to go into hybrid, but the hybrid model was completely different. That model was going to be Monday, Tuesday, same kids, and then we would switch, and then Thursday, Friday would have the same kids. But now we are throwing in the online aspect, and I am so glad my district is not making what I feel like the mistake the other districts are making, because this is what I hear teachers and kids struggling with the most, and it's freaking Zoom. Okay, I don't know how you can expect us to have a whole lesson going on and kids in class, but still zooming in with the other half of the kids. Like the amount of time my kids get kicked off the internet and I have to let them in or send them links on GoGuardian or hey, hey, put your cat down. Like that is not going to happen if I had in-person kids and Zoom kids. Like you're literally asking me to be in two places at once and I can't do that. Unless there was aids that would come in and they would only control the Zoom portion. But I just, honestly, after the first week, I don't even see those online kids coming back. There's no point. And there really is no point because our internet out here is terrible to where I legit try to just do a lesson where like I brought my little stand to my whiteboard to like teach on a whiteboard like a normal person. And I couldn't, they were all like, I can't see you, you're frozen, you're blurry. It's just a giant blob. So I don't see that going well in class. So I'm so thankful that we could all agree that that is not a good idea and that we were able to avoid it. Again, hoping everything stays the same because this is a pretty good hybrid model in my opinion. So let me explain it. So we're still gonna have two groups. That means my class is split in half. There's going to be group A and group B. Group A will come to school in the mornings from eight to 11. Then we're gonna have lunch 11 to 11.45. Then 11.45 to 2.45, I'm going to get online and talk to group B on hybrid. That's for Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, all online. That's a super deep clean before our group B comes in. So that means I work from home which I'm shocked by because my district hasn't allowed us to work from home since like March. So we're gonna work from home on Wednesdays and Wednesdays from eight to 8.30, I have to log on to take role and to also do a social emotional learning activity. Then from there, I have prep. I get to prep for the whole next week. Have you ever had that much prep time in your life? Like I haven't, so I get prep till 1.30 and then 1.30 to 3.15, we're gonna have professional development. Then for Thursday, Friday, we do the same thing that we did Monday, Tuesday, but switching the groups. So Thursday, Friday would be group B is in person, eight to 11, lunch 11 to 11.45. Then group A, I'll be meeting with online from 11.45 to 2.45. And then prep 2.45 to 3.15. What? That seems way too good to be true. I, st I feel like something's going to come and mess that up. But so far, that's the plan. Also, what this means is that teachers and students will have to wear masks at all times. I teach third grade, so again, it is required that we all wear masks. We also have face shields, so hopefully, if there is a student that is unable to wear a mask due to health reasons, a face shield can at least do a little something. Um, I'm curious too if I can wear a face shield if I have a six feet distance or will I still have to wear the face shield and the mask because my concern is I do want my kids being able to see my expressions and how I enunciate things. And it's just very important that our kids see our mouths when we're teaching, you know? So we'll see, or invest in those super cute masks that have like the cutout so you can see my mouth. 
that that is the other option. I don't know, but I'm I'm excited. I shouldn't have said that. If you follow me on Instagram, you know that every time I say I'm excited about something, it immediately derails and goes terrible. So I'm not excited about this. I am waiting to see how things turn out. I have high hopes. There we go. I have high hopes. If I can at least get my kids in class for two days, if I can get them for two days, I think we can do it. Plus, especially everyone's like just now like, oh, you know, we should probably do something about curriculum. I don't know how we're gonna teach all of that this year. That That's where we're at? Because I thought that was like a known thing. Like, hey, nice of you to join the teacher universe. We need to stick with the basics. If it were me and just my opinion, thoughts on anything, I would be focusing on mastering the basics, really taking the time to do that, making sure we're checking in our kids emotionally, because that right now, that's the most important thing. Making sure that they are just doing okay, you know, that they're well, that they're happy, that they enjoy coming to school, that's way more important. And you can't tell me that a kid can be happy every day if they're having trouble with their internet every day. If they can only hear me part of the time because internet keeps cutting out. You know, like that is just not the way school is supposed to be. And I know we're doing what we can right now, but like I said, if I can get my kids in here two days a week, I'm happy with that. And I think they will be too. Granted, I know them hearing we're going to hybrid. They just imagine everything's going to be exactly the same, but we'll have to get into that. You know, like we will be coming back grade level at a time, like a week apart. So like first TK will come a week later, kinder a week later first, so on. And our school goes up to third. So mine will be last. So I'm hoping again, we can keep it together long enough for our third graders to come back. Even if it's just for a couple weeks, I just want to see my kids. And then again, go over these foundational websites and stuff that we use every day that for some reason we're still struggling. Oh, homework will stay the same. It'll all be online. That way, just at the end of the day, I can go over and answer some questions in class, maybe show them if they don't know where it's at. But online is the way to go. We can't send papers home and then we can't bring them back. So we can't be transferring stuff back and forth. It makes sense again for everything just to be online, submitted online. So classwork that's here, gets done here, stays here. Stuff that's done at home, stays at home. There's no mixing of the two. Okay, and then the next thing I wanna tackle is if I have half my kids coming in at a time, can I have only 13 desks in here? I just wanna simplify, you know? So if I can just have 13 desks in here, and but they don't keep anything in the desk, because I can totally see that being a problem. But if it is just desks, and then each kid has a bin of their supplies that they will need for the day or the two days, since they'll be there Monday, Tuesday, and then Thursday, Friday, then I actually see it being way easier to clean only 13 desks that are just legit tables rather than full on 26 desks with all the kids supplies in it and stuff like that. That just seems way more germy to me. So fingers crossed, I'm sure kids are gonna have trouble with masks. I'm sure it's going to be difficult as far as how we maneuver in the class. Like that's the thing too. If I have 13 desks and that means I can have them more spread out to where I don't have to worry about kids like crossing each other. You know, if say they get up and move a little bit, if I have 26 desks, yeah, that person's probably gonna move in someone's spot. But if I have 13 desks, that means they have a little more space and that way we can still like, okay, stand up, give me some jumping jack, let's do frog jumps, let's do some ninja stuff. And they have room for all of that without invading anyone else's space. I'm gonna write that down, bring that to the board. Guys, I feel old. I legit went to a district board meeting instead of watching The Bachelor on Monday night. How grown up am I? That's impressive. So guys, go to your board meetings. I always feel like I'm the last one to find out any information and I'm like, hey, anyone know about this, this, that? And it's just opinions and I'm like, no. Give me the facts, what's going on? What do I need to like look ahead at? And what's just, what is going on? In my opinion, if you can't, I know it sounds boring as heck, really wasn't that bad though. Go to your board meetings, stay up to date. Granted, this is my fourth year and we are in a pandemic. So that is the only reason why I felt the pull to go and find out more information, but I'm gonna keep going to them. I really feel like it keeps me in the loop and knowing what is going on, especially as a new teacher, where it's like, I don't really know how this stuff works to begin with. So I feel like it gives you a really big insight. Another thing, 
I'm, I'm bouncing all over. Let, I'll see if I can rearrange this editing, but if not, sorry about it. My school is going to have three points of entry and that way the different grades can all come in through different areas of the building. Again, we are not crossing. Teachers and students will be getting temperature checks. Staff is going to be getting a test every two months at a, we're getting set a home kit. And then of course there is a closure plan as well. So if one student in the class gets sick, the whole class is down. Once 5% of classrooms are down, then the whole school has to shut down. Once 25% of schools are shut down, then the whole district has to shut down and go back to distance learning. Again, this is just a light plan. It is not set in stone. This was just what was put out there. I'm sure there will be anxiety due to it just looking completely different with masks and less students in the class and who knows what else we'll add, you know, going to school different ways. I'm sure that we will have some anxiety, but if I have them in class, I can show them that we're still safe, we're still having fun, and I'm just glad that they're here. <sighs> well, I think that's all the deets on the hybrid. I have high hopes. I'll keep you posted if anything changes. If you like this video, please give me a big thumbs up. Subscribe down below if you haven't already. Let me know what your plans are. Are you already in hybrid? Are you going to hybrid? If you're already in hybrid, how's it going? What are some tips you have? Leave them in the comments because you know your girl will need them. And I'll see you next week. Bye, guys.